Hey everyone, it's Ben Hansen, UFO researcher and host of UFO Witness on Travel Channel Discovery Plus. So I promised everyone that I would give you an update uh, from the UFO story I broke earlier this week. This was with the former F-18 uh, pilot who witnessed a UAP event over Los Angeles on August 18th. Um, I know I always say I'm going to keep this short and last time was 30 minutes. So to keep this shorter, I'm not going to review the whole incident here. Please go back to the video this is linked to in YouTube and Twitter and look at the original video and analysis if you can sit through it without changing the channel and getting bored and, and whatever people do who don't want to really uh, look into it. <laughs> so um, let's get into what is new, okay? So first of all, I do want to say that I owe some credit to Mick West. He's uh, a very... Uh, well-known skeptic, um, often on Twitter, and has made you know news appearances. A lot of people have told me, "Why are you even talking to this guy? He doesn't believe anything, and always has you know you know really poor uh, explanations for things." I do want to say, Mick is one of the only um, people to fit this category who is very respectful. He's always been respectful to me. I've always. Um, not always agreed with his uh, conclusions on things, but I do believe this is somebody who really wants the truth. And if it's the truth that we're after, uh, I think we need to listen and look at some of these explanations and be open to every possibility, right? Everyone is free to make up their own mind, but in this case, um, he brought something forward regarding the videos that this pilot had taken, okay? And I do believe at this point that he is correct in that um, this little pinkish purplish light that shows up in flashes in, in the videos that were recorded by the pilot are in fact the infrared autofocus light uh, that comes on and is sometimes seen in reflections of mirrors and, and glass if the conditions are dark enough. I don't fault the pilot for not knowing this. In fact, I don't fault myself. Um, I like to think that I'm pretty up on technology and artifacts introduced into cameras. However, this only came about in the past year or two when they started adding the autofocus and, and LiDAR technology to um, iPhones and smartphones. Okay, So uh, it's something that we always have to keep testing and trying and, and you know trying to find out if we can explain because technology changes so quickly. You, you also have to remember that and what Mick West suggested, the pyramid-shaped UFO uh, that they addressed in actually the UFO uh, congressional hearing, this pyramid-shaped UFO that, that uh, Jeremy Corbell had, had put forward, it was dubbed pyramid-shaped. The pyramid shape, I took one of Mick West's suggestions and went out with my night vision and recreated what we call the bokeh effect. So that, I believe, is why it is shaped in pyramid form. However, and this is really important, with this case as well. Don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. Okay? Some of these cases have a lot of nuance and we want the the evidence to be in the video. We want it there. We want to make up our minds. It is or it isn't extraordinary and boom, case closed. Okay? In the case with the Corbell video and the Boca effect, my conclusion is the shape of it could very well be uh, created by the aperture of the night vision. That does not, however, explain in my mind the unusual flight characteristics of how long these drone swarms were in the area, the related thermal camera of what appears to be going down into the water, um, the fact that they couldn't track these things and they talked about anti-drone uh, technology not being able to bring them down. All of that is concerning and is unconventional in my mind. It has not yet been solved. Okay, So in this case, Mick West deserves credit and I think people should um, be open to to any person who takes a rational approach and offers explanations and take a look into it. So what happens, uh, walking you through this really quick, I will put up the video here. You can see um, the video that he took of the city lights. He was trying to establish uh, the city lights as he was setting up his cockpit uh, for the next transition into the next radar um, uh, in, you know, airspace, and he's setting up everything so he's busy in the cockpit, but he's scanning the skies. In the other video, he took a picture of his instrumentation to establish what was there. 
And in this case as well, you can see that um, he, he wasn't expecting to capture or anything because the video is shaky in the cockpit and that's when the pinkish lights, um, you know, are, are captured in the very corner. So what I was trying to establish in my questioning to him was, were you actually directly seeing the object in, in the case like this, the video of the city where you were then trying to record what you're seeing? Are you seeing the same thing at the time you're trying to record? And he was very honest with me and transparent. He said, you know what? I don't know. If you think about it, he's got three videos less than a minute long, uh, an event that happened 15, 20 minutes long. And so he's really just trying to steady the phone against the window and take some video as he's scanning the skies. Okay, so he's looking up, he's looking around. Um, you know, it's straining because at the top of the cockpit, the things are going up over him. And he wasn't sure if he was capturing anything at all. Um, so having explained that, it seems very rational to me, but he's very adamant about one thing. He saw objects that have no conventional explanation in his mind. His credentials as a military pilot, um, you know, he knows what should and should not be in the sky and the capabilities of different aircraft. And he's seeing, seeing these things rotating around each other above his altitude, going from right to over the top to in front of him. And it's enough that he calls air traffic control reports it and all of this happens before he even picks up his iPhone to start recording. So in my mind, these are two separate issues. He's very adamant. In fact, he has what I call uh, witness remorse right now. It's been really difficult for him because um, he, he wanted it to be something in the video. Uh, he wanted there to be evidence of what he saw. And I said, you know what? It doesn't matter. You really should forget what other people say. You know what you saw. Um, separate the video apart from it. It would have been great if you did capture something, but he's kind of a changed man. Um, we can get into that later, but he's, he's bought new cameras for his cockpits, uh, for his cockpit to, to film all the time when he's flying. He, he really wants to capture something now because he is disappointed. Um, but that doesn't change what he saw and what he reported. Okay. So where does that leave us now? We would love to find other witness testimony. I myself love uh, corroborating witnesses, collateral witnesses, because uh, the credibility of, of one, you know, um, very credible in my mind, military pilot is great, but it would be great if we had other aircraft who saw things um, in the sky. Well, we do. All right. Now, to set this up, um, I need to explain briefly. I'll pull up this map. This is a Los Angeles Center air traffic control sector map. And we're looking at sectors 25 and 28. Okay, just off the coast um, to the west of LAX and um, Catalina, Santa Barbara, actually going all the way up to Santa Barbara here. This sector, um, obviously it's divided up because not one controller can handle the whole area. So um, if you go to liveatc. I think it's .net, uh, there's live feeds, okay, that people, volunteers, they have scanners, radios that they feed into this website and they're capturing audio from air traffic control. The audio you're about to hear is garbled, okay? It's very low. I'm going to have to boost it up. Uh, when I started out as a pilot, it took me a long time to understand anything that controllers and pilots said. So even though I'm going to try and transcribe a lot of what you're hearing, there's parts of it even that I can't hear that are too scratchy. Okay, that's because the scanners that are picking these up, uh, sometimes they're only getting the most powerful radio signal coming from air traffic control, but they're not getting the pilot side of the conversation because that pilot could be a couple hundred miles out over the ocean. All right, so sometimes you only hear what air traffic control is saying, that's why we, we uh, filed a FOIA request. Those audio tapes that come back from the FOIA will have, um, because it's recorded at air traffic control facility, you'll get the controller and you'll get the pilot side of it. Okay, so having said that, American Airlines flight number six, uh, coming in from Honolulu, and now that one's coming uh, from west to east, it passes uh, Twilight 670, which this pilot was flying out to Hawaii. 
I would say my best estimate right now, it was about 20 minutes um, up to 40 minutes uh, after when they pass each other. And now American Airlines is heading in. And I'm going to put that map up right here. So you can see it way out over the ocean. Um, there you have Twilight 670. And you can see that American is passing the opposite direction, United 2650. 2650, if you remember, was one of the airlines that I had highlighted before that may have seen something. Air traffic control said that they were about 70 miles behind um, our pilot in uh, Twilight 670. So they're trailing him, and they did make some radio calls. I won't play it here in the interest of time. But uh, the controller was asking them to be on the lookout for these objects that he, uh, the pilot had reported. And at the end of it, um, United says they didn't see anything. Now, I will point out, it may or may not be a factor, but you can see the altitude of United 2650 is 34,000 feet. So they're actually 13,000 feet below the altitude of the Gulf Stream. And... Um, it may not seem like much, but five to 10,000 feet um, in, in altitude can make a big difference in what you're able to see with um, air traffic when you're flying around. And especially depending on the size of the objects, uh, a typical sized you know plane, that's, that's like two miles away, right, in altitude. So um, uh, American Airlines, on the other hand, if you take a look at where they're at, they're at 39,000 feet which is only 8,000 feet below um, Twilight 670, or in other words, like a mile and a half. So quite a bit closer. May or may not have any factor in this as to why they were able to see something and United was not. But um, I'm going to play the audio for you now, and I do owe another shout-out to um, a YouTube user named PDGLS. So they made a comment on the YouTube video and pointed me to uh, a compilation that they had made of air traffic communications that occurred uh, up to an hour after uh, Twilight 670 passed through. And it's because of them that I went to the, the files. So again, this is gonna be um, really low and garbled, but uh, I'll transcribe what we do here. And then hopefully when the FOIA comes in, we'll hear the full communications from this other side. But what you're gonna hear to me is uh, quite interesting. American 6 LA Center clock 2617. American 6 radar contact at Edsel Clear Direct in Catalina. American 6, do you have time for a question? Um, earlier, probably about 20 minutes ago, I had an aircraft that was outbound at 47,000 feet and they reported um, multiple aircraft above them circling. Um, I just wondered if you saw anything that was uh, probably between LA and Dinty, they reported it several times. And they said that if you look at the Big Dipper, it was near that. Roger, yeah, that's, that's what we thought it was here. But um, the guy said he was a retired F-86 pilot, and he'd never seen anything like it. And it was definitely aircraft. So I was just wondering if you had seen anything. Roger, thanks. Yeah, I wish we knew what it was. Yeah. So the best we can tell, that takes place at about 1.21 a.m. Uh, local time, or 08.21 Zulu. And the controller, as soon as American Airlines enters her sector, updates them on the information because they're in a good position to possibly see something. So he kind of immediately responds, and, and we're only hearing the one side of this, again, because the scanner doesn't pick up the pilot's side of it from this far out. But we're left to guess that um, the conversation, from what she says, that's what we were thinking too, is referring to what I showed in the other video where we, we have her calling... Um, the higher up her supervisor and uh, they're kind of you know joking about Elon Musk and maybe satellites or things like that so I'm guessing she um, talking to the pilot the pilot made the suggestion it might be a satellite or it might be a rocket launch and she says that's what we were thinking too okay now there's silence for about 20 uh, 27 minutes until approximately 148 AM, American Airlines on their own is going to initiate contact with air traffic control. And this is the part where you can now hear the pilot speaking, but it's going to be really low. Um, and I'm going to transcribe what's going on. American 
fixed address. And you said that was to the north of you. And how long was it happening? Because I think that's probably the same thing that other aircraft seen. Yeah, it's happening American Six Badger, thank you. I'll, I'll report that because they were they were asking uh, up higher if I had any more reports. So thanks. And American Six, thanks for that. Uh, it has been reported, and you can contact LA Center now one one nine or point nine or five. So there you have it, the straight up audio of what happened. Um, I think it's quite noteworthy for a few reasons. So remember, the controller asked them at about. Um, 0820, which would have been 120 a.m. to be on the lookout because they knew that they would be passing through that same area. And it was about 20 something minutes before American Airlines comes back to them and says, we're seeing something. Okay, so so pilots, they don't have the time or, or anything to just make stuff up or, you know, like um, tell the controller what they want to hear. This is very serious when you're talking to um, controllers and giving them information that could impact the safety of a flight. Um, they know that's what they're looking for. And so when they come up and say, um, we're seeing some bright lights now off to the north of us, well above the horizon, um, he talks about the lights getting really bright and then dim, and it's in the same general area. Um, I believe he says it's not continual or not continuous. Um, we clearly hear that it's uh, in 10 second intervals. Now again, I hope that we get the FOIA request, uh, the radar, or I'm sorry, the audio tapes will give us that other side of the conversation, but we get the gist of it. Now I'm gonna overlay a map here and you can see where American 6 um, would have been crossing and in, in the same map here you see uh, the Gulf Stream going the other way and it was almost, uh, looks like about an hour before. It would have been over an hour uh, and a bit before when they would have crossed that same area and where the Gulf Stream first started seeing things. Now this is really interesting because even though the description is, is not that detailed, we don't know if these lights were actually moving. We're not going to jump to any uh, assumptions here that these lights um, are explainable, but they were mysterious enough that American 6 reports seeing them and, and tells uh, air traffic control. And you can hear her say, yeah, well, the higher-ups wanted to know more about this. And in fact, um, if we had time, I would play for you more audio because she reached out to, like I said, the United flight and asked them. Uh, they also reached out to uh, this plane right here. Now, it comes up initially unidentified and it has no call sign, which um, some of them don't. But as they get closer, the ADSB does provide that information. It says it's a K35R. And uh, when the information pops up, we see that's a KC135. And it's owned by the Air Force. Um, they don't show a destination of where they're headed, but they were coming out of Honolulu. And um, the controller is now talking to them. So they're not going to provide any information either, but she does provide a little bit more of the whole sighting and uh, what everyone is seeing. So just for fun, let's go ahead and play that. Remy 9 3 uh, Remy 9 3 I've had uh, a few aircraft um, that have reported a multiple aircraft or lights um, in circles between L.A. and Dinsey's or Edsel area. Um, could you let me know if you see anything like that? They said it was probably around 50,000 plus feet. Now, that's the best description I could get. Uh, one of the guys uh, was a retired F-18 pilot. He said he'd never seen anything like it, but it looked like multiple aircraft going in circles at very high altitude. It was, well, the most recent report was probably about 30 minutes ago, maybe 150 miles ahead of you. Um, the report before that, he had reported it from probably 20 miles west of L.A. all the way to 280 miles west of L.A. Um, headed west, reported it to the north side of him, said it was near the Big Dipper at the time, but I, I know this guy's moved since then, so I'm not sure exactly where it would be. Yeah, thank you. Let me know if you... So the audio is pretty clear on that. That's why I'm not going to attempt to transcribe it. And um, I, I want to, you know, again, thank the YouTube commenter who compiled it because they took all the dead airspace out. So it's really not in live time. It didn't happen that quickly. 
obviously she's hearing the pilot side of it, but uh, there's one part I do have of the pilot responding, but it's unintelligible. It's not even worth posting, um, but we're, we're led to understand that he did not see anything, okay, at the end of his leaving the, the sector. So well over two hours goes by. The controller is calling out any airline who might be in the area passing through and transiting, telling them to be on the lookout, giving them those reports of what the now two different um, pilots had seen things, the Gulf Stream, and now American Airlines reporting something um, very mysterious as well. At this point, we do not know if it's the same phenomenon. So I have to stress that because the characteristics, we haven't talked to the, um, the American Airlines pilots. We have no information at this point. So they're seeing bright lights that are getting really intense and dimming, and Gulf Stream is seeing objects that are going... Um, in circles and transiting from his right side over the top of his aircraft and pacing him. So could be two different things. Um, we don't know at this point, but um, very coincidental that it happens in the same area and within uh, probably less than an hour the phenomenon is still occurring in that area. All right, so what does this all mean? Well, like I said, this is a developing story. I can tell you that I've talked uh, with people indirectly who work uh, in the control facility and it, it would seem that we would be surprised how much activity is going on there. Our pilot spoke to JTOC the next day in Pennsylvania, the Joint Air Traffic Operations Command. And um, according to his recollection, there was some talk of how uh, active the area is there as well. And if you remember, too, um, he was told the next day, the, the air traffic controller who tracked him down and called him said there were reports from other airlines. Now, remember, go back and read or uh, see the video if you want, but those other airlines, at least two were named, according to his recollection, two different airlines who did not want to talk on the radio. Okay, so what I just played for you here is American Airlines who was on the radio. So it is possible we're looking at up to three different airlines at this point who are reporting unusual activity, same night, same area, and uh, it's noteworthy enough that it's come to their attention that this is significant. They can't explain it, and it's been reported to the higher-ups. So that's where it is. All right, so to wrap this up, I do have one more thing for you because um, I was getting tweets and messages from people saying here's a video from TikTok and I'll pull that up right here and and this comes from a pilot named Trent okay and um, you can see his handle there flying high now people uh, this is really strange because uh, Mick West sent this to me and others saying is this your pilot is this the guy you've been talking to apparently on August 10th this pilot and his captain uh, posted a little uh, video of them talking about a UFO sighting they had. All right, and then on August 17th, he posts an update saying that part of his sighting was explainable as the IR light from their iPhone that was reflecting in the window. Now, August 18th is when the Gulf Stream has their sighting, and as my... Um, uh, feeling is right now what was captured in that video was also IR light again not discounting actually you know what he directly observed at all but this was the same light um, our Gulfstream pilot same explanation that this IR light was causing that reflection and uh, which is very coincidental right um, <laughs> that both would happen kind of at the same time and they'd both kind of figure out what what had happened there but I will do a deep dive with Trent. I plan on doing it. It might take me a week or two because I'm going to be out of town. Um, I can guarantee you that people are going to be decide, uh, dissecting Trent's videos because he had um, at least two incidents, and one of them captured on camera, where um, he was heading into LAX about an hour out. Same location and almost exactly the same description that American Airlines had of this light that gets really, really bright and then gets dim. Right, um, he saw this in at one time heading into LA and then also um, heading away from Honolulu a couple hours out, where there were multiple at least three or four aircraft that were flying alongside of him. They talk plane to plane on a, on a certain frequency, 
and they were saying, do you guys see this? And uh, they were talking about what they were seeing. And this video, like I said, will be dissected. Um, and probably people will put more emphasis on the video than the, the witness testimony, as many do. But the fact is, people are seeing um, perhaps a new phenomenon. We don't know yet at this point. Um, and maybe it's explainable, maybe it's not. Um, I will say, if you go and, and look at Trent's videos, um, he did mistake Starlink initially, which a lot of people do. And he's, uh, he's very transparent about things that can be explained. And so uh, at this point, though, there, there doesn't seem to be an explanation for what these pilots had seen. So I will keep you updated. And uh, thanks for watching.